Hello students in this video we'll discuss about the fercation involvement and its management right so first of all what do you mean by a fercation and why are we studying this topic separately fercation in the simplest sense it can be defined as the area between the two roots or area between the roots so it is more likely to be occurring in the posterior dentition right it has to be in the multi rooted teeth and fercation involvement is the periodontal involvement it is the periodontal involvement of the fercation is referred to as fercation involvement right so why we are studying this as a separate topic in perio is that you know any periodontal disease any periodontitis can have bone loss it can have attachment loss and other features this fercation it is a very complex and difficult to access region i repeat firstly it is very complex and second it is difficult to access region that means if there is periodontal bone loss that is happening in your fercation region then your patient he cannot brush and maintain its cleanliness and number 2 a periodontist even with the best of the best instruments cannot 100% clean that area or instrument that area because it is very difficult to access that is why we are studying fercation as a separate topic its management is different from that the conventional management of routine periodontal disease okay we'll start definition fercation is the area or zone of division of roots in a multi rooted teeth fercation involvement it refers to the invasion of bifurcation and trifurcation of multi rooted teeth by periodontal disease that i have already mentioned now any question related to fercation should always start with this diagram right in this you are defining what is meant by the different terminologies that you will be using in your answer that is you know this is the crown we are more interested in the root portion of the teeth this undivided portion of the root this undivided portion of the root is referred to as the root trunk is referred to as the root trunk whereas this divided portion of the root it's referred to as root cone root trunk and root cone now this portion this portion where the root it starts to divide it's called as fornix or roof of the fercation it's called as fornix or roof of the fercation and the angle in which the roots are separating is called as degree of separation that is if there is more angle between the roots it has a more degree of separation if the roots are close together the angle is less so it has a less degree of separation right if there is a more degree of separation if the roots are widely spaced then you can access this region very easily whereas if the roots are narrow or close by you cannot access that region easily all right now the etiology for fercation involvement is the uh, you know same etiology of that of any periodontal disease that is long term bacterial plaque and inflammatory consequences as that of periodontitis in addition to this it has local anatomical factors like root trunk length root morphology proximity to the fercation of the cement enamel junction presence of accessory pulp canals that is even through your endodontic involvement even through your endodontic root canal infection infection can reach your fercation region all right local developmental anomalies like cervical enamel projections and enamel pearls that i'll be discussing also you have trauma from occlusion the local anatomic factors is your root trunk length the root length the root form the interradical dimension the anatomy of the fercation and cervical enamel projections starting with the root trunk see if the root trunk length root trunk means the undivided portion of the root if the root trunk length is short that means with very little amount of periodontal bone loss the fercation region can be involved whereas if the root trunk length is more then you need a severe or a you know a much more periodontal bone loss to involve the fercation you're getting it if the root trunk length is small with a very little amount of periodontal bone loss the root fercation can be involved but 
even though the furcation is involved in this region, it is more accessible because the furcation is found more coronally. Whereas in the second case, even though the root trunk length is long, the furcation requires more amount of bone loss to become involved. Once it becomes involved, it is very less accessible and it has a very poor prognosis. Very, very less access and it has a very poor prognosis. Right. The root length, it is directly related to the quantity of attachment supporting the teeth. Teeth with long roots and short to moderate root trunk length are more readily treated. Long roots, that is the total root length is long. And moderate to short root trunk length are more readily treated for furcation involvement because sufficient attachment remains to meet functional demands. This second first case that we have discussed. Long roots and short trunks, they can be involved early. The furcation can be involved early, but once involved, they can be readily treated. Local anatomical factors like the root form. The mesial root of mandibular first and second molars and the mesiobuccal root of the maxillary first molar are typically curved to the distal side in the apical third and the distal aspect of this root is usually heavily fruited. That is your mandibular first molar. The roots are most commonly like this. That is the mesial root, it is typically curved to the distal side. Right? And this portion is heavily fluted. It has concavities. So this portion, it cannot be treated effectively or it cannot be easily treated. It is not easily treated. So once this is involved, the treatment can become complex. The interradicular dimension, as I mentioned, teeth with widely separated roots present more treatment options and are readily treated compared to the roots which are narrow or very close by. The anatomy of the furcation, if the furcation already it is very difficult to access, on top of that, if it has the presence of bifurcation bridges, the concavity domes, accessory canals, all of which which further complicates your treatment, you know, all of these are affecting the prognosis. If everything is present, you rather shift the patient for extraction or root resection of conservative treatment. There is something called as cervical enamel projection, an important topic. This cervical enamel projection. As the name suggests, it is the projection or protrusion of enamel from CJ towards the furcation. I repeat, it is the growth or protrusion or projection of enamel from the CJ to the furcation region. That is, if this is your tooth, there can be a protrusion or projection of enamel from the CJ towards the furcation. And if this projection is small, it's okay. But if it is completely covering the furcation, then it will prevent any access into the furcation. Moreover, this cervical enamel projection is nothing but enamel. So if it is enamel, it prevents any periodontal attachment. Your sharpest fibers cannot insert into enamel. The periodontal attachment is compromised. So, this further complicates the periodontal treatment. Now, the most important question that we will get from percussion is the Glickman's classification. Glickman was a scientist in 1953. He put forward a widely accepted, even to this date, a classification of periodontitis. That is, he classified periodontitis into four grades based upon the extent of bone loss, wherein grade 1 is the least severe and grade 4 is the most severe. As per Glickman, the grade 1 furcation involvement is the incipient or early lesion. That is, furcation has just, the furcation has begun to get involved in periodontal disease. There is no horizontal bone loss into the furcation. No horizontal bone loss into the furcation. That is, the furcation region has been exposed due to periodontal bone loss, but there is no bone loss extending horizontally into the furcation. The pocket is usually suprabony with slight loss of bone in the furcation region and no radiographic changes. He called it as an incipient or grade 1 as you can appreciate. See, if you can look at this diagram, the furcation region is begin, beginning to get involved with periodontal bone loss but your neighbor's probe 
is the probe that is used to measure fluctuation. It is not going horizontally inside. All right. Whereas in grade two, it is called as cul de sac, means a closed sac. That means the probe is going horizontally into the fluctuation, but it is not complete. That is, if there is a root like this, right? The probe is going like this, but it is not coming out from the other side. It is closed. That's why it's called as cul de sac. The bone is destroyed in one or more aspects, but portion of periodontal ligaments and portion of alveolar bone are intact, permitting only partial probe penetration. The radiographic changes may or may not be present, right? It is like this. The probe goes inside into the furcation, but it does not come out to the other side. It is not, it is not a through and through lesion. It is not a through and through lesion. Through and through lesion means like this. You put a probe, it comes out to the other side. There is some bone present which is obstructing the passage of the probe. And grade 3 is a through and through lesion. It is an example of a through and through lesion wherein interradicular bone is lost completely, right? The probe goes through and through, but the furcation is covered by gingival tissues. The furcation, it is the bone is lost, but still it is covered by gingival tissues. That is why you cannot see this furcation clinically. Through and through penetration of probe and radiographically, a radiolucency is seen like this. A Typical radiolucency is seen. The probe process through and through it comes out to the other side, but it is covered by gingiva. If you see clinically, this will be covered by gingiva like this. It is not exposed or visible to the oral cavity. Whereas in Glickman's grade 4, it is the same as grade 3, but it is visible in the oral cavity. That is, the grade 3 furcation involvement it is accompanied by apical recession of silk tissues. So, furcation which is through and through. Right, it is also exposed clinically due to recession. The gingiva is receding. The furcation is exposed in the oral cavity. Right. Now, even though this Glickman's classification is most accepted, it is most accepted. This classification was silent on the amount of vertical bone loss. This classification was silent on the amount of vertical bone loss. Or in other words, this Glickman's classification was purely based upon the extent of horizontal bone loss. Right. So, in order to compensate for this drawback, two scientists, Tarno and Fletcher in 1984, they gave, they did not give a new classification. They subclassified the Glickman's classification into three types. That is, Glickman's classification of 1, 2, 3, 4 is still accepted. And this classification is subdivided into subclass A, B, and C. And this subclass A, B, and C is based on the amount of the vertical bone loss. That is, subclass A has a vertical bone loss of 1 to 3 millimeters. Subclass B has vertical bone loss of 4 to 6 millimeters. And subclass C has bone loss of more than 6 millimeters, right? More than or equal to 7 millimeters. So they subclassified Glickman's classification. Right, this is the pictorial representation that is subclass A, B, and C based upon the extent of vertical bone loss. Right. Now, how do you diagnose percussion involvement? I told you it is by specially designed probes, which is your neighbor's probe. If you do not have a neighbor's probe, you can also do it with your number 23 explorer. You can also do it with your transgingival sounding, which is done under local anesthesia. You insert your probe and you feel for the bone. You insert your probe till the bone surface and you feel the bone morphology. It is also referred to as bone sounding. It is also referred to as bone sounding. Right. Now, the radiographic appearance, three diagnostic criteria are suggested. The slightest radiographic change in the furcation area should be investigated clinically, especially if there is periodontal bone loss on adjacent roots. Any slight change in the furcation area should be suspected for furcation involvement and should be treated as early as possible. Any diminished radio density in the furcation area which outlines the bony trabeculae are visible, which suggests furcation involvement. That is, diminished radio opacity. There need not be a radiolucency as such. 
that any radio opacity which is lessened or diminished can also be suspected for circadian involvement. Whenever there is market mole loss in relation to a single molar root, single molar root, it may be assumed that the circadian is also involved. That is, if any root, if any molar has a marked bone loss in one of its roots, that means the percussion also is most likely to be affected. So, these are the radiographic criteria for percussion involvement. Management, grade 1, it is incipient lesion. So, it can be managed by screening and root flaring. You can also do a curettage or gingivectomy to expose the percussion area to the oral cavity. Odontoplasty to reshape or to eliminate the local factors which can cause plaque accumulation. For example, if you have a cervical enamel projection, if you have an enamel pearl, you can do an odontoplasty to eliminate that local factor. Grade 2, early non-invasive can be done by screening, root planning and curettage. You can do a furcation plasty which combines an osteoplasty and odontoplasty. That is, you make it self-cleansable. Just like how you do an enameloplasty. You make the furcation region self-cleansable. You remove any contributing factors. Whereas more advanced cases require the presence of tunneling. In tunneling, what you do is you convert a grade 2 furcation into a grade 4. That is, initially you take a bar and you remove whatever bone is being present. Grade 2 is a cul de sac, it's a closed sac. There is some obstruction. What you do is you take a bar and make the furcation grade 4 through and through. Then you reposition the gingiva apical to the furcation. I repeat, look at my hands. This is grade 2. Alright? You make it through and through and you reposition the gingival tissue apically so that the patient can use a interdental proxa brush. The patient can use a interdental proxa brush and clean the area or keep the area clean. That is what is meant by tunneling. You can also do an autogenous and allogenous bone graft along with GTR for regeneration. For regeneration of the furcation region. Grade 3 furcation, grade 4, more advanced. Early grade 3 can be done with periodontal regeneration and advanced with the help of resective procedures. You can do a root resection or a any section. And grade 4, mostly with resective procedures and advanced cases require extraction. The resective procedures are of three types. You have root resection, hemisection and bicuspidization. This root resection, it involves the removal of a root without removal of any portion of the crown. That is, let's say you have a furcation like this. There is heavy bone loss on one of the roots like this and furcation is also involved. And the other root has good amount of bone support. In this case, what you do is, under anesthesia, you resect this portion of the root and you remove it, whereby you are eliminating the furcation. You are eliminating the furcation. That is root resection. Whereas, uh, you can see this diagram, you are removing a portion, you are removing this involved root, you are cutting it off and you are removing the furcation, you are eliminating the furcation. This is root resection. Whereas hemisection, it is similar to root resection, but in hemisection, you are removing this affected root and also the corresponding portion of the crown. Surgical removal of a root with associated portion of the crown, it is most likely performed on mandibular molar with buccal and lingual class 2 or 3 furcation involvement. A portion of the root and its corresponding crown is removed, that is hemisection. Whereas bicuspidization, it is similar to hemisection, but you know, hemisection was like this. After removing, you are left with a portion of the crown and portion of the root like this. Whereas in bicuspidization, what you do is, let's say this is your molar, right? You make a cut and you preserve both the fragments separately. You give a cut and you preserve both the fragments separately. That is, you are effectively converting a molar into two premolars. Premolars are bicuspids. That is why this procedure is called as bicuspidization. Sectioning of the root complex and maintaining of all the roots. 
The decision for bicuspidization is based upon the extent and pattern of bone loss, the root trunk length, the ability to eliminate the bone defect, and endodontic and restorative consideration, ability to place a crown. Right, diagrammatically, you should draw this diagram that you are cutting the molar, you are eliminating the furcation and preserving it as two premolars. You do an RCP and place a crown like this. That is bicuspidization. So, resective procedures you had your root resection, the hemisection, and bicuspidization. All right. So, in your furcation involvement chapter, most likely asked question is your Glickman's classification. Glickman's classification, right? You should know Glickman and the year 1953, he classified furcation into four grades and everything. You should mention about, you should explain about each grade. You should write about the clinical feature. You should write about the radiographic appearance. And always every grade should be accompanied with a self explanatory corresponding diagram right only then you will get the impressive full mark all right and if you can add a last note that the drawback of Lippmann's classification was so it was silent on the vertical uh, bone loss so it was subclassified into subclass a b and c no need to go into detail but if you can write a drawback on Lippmann's classification it will be your cherry on top of your cake you will get a full mark and the second question that can come from vocation chapter is your resective techniques that is root resection, hemisection, and bicuspidization. Do not get confused between hemisection and bicuspidization. The keyword is bicuspidization. You are converting it into two bicuspids, two premolars. All right. And again, draw diagrams with each resective procedures. All right. So that summarizes this chapter on furcation involvement and its management.